In this video, we will be looking at some elementary principles of radio navigation in the Mirage 2000C. We will go over the basic functions of very high frequency omnidirectional ranging, similar use of the tactical air navigation network, discuss how to use the horizontal situation indicator in both these examples of radio navigation, and look at some of the advantages and disadvantages of both systems. Hello fellow virtual aviators, we are back in the elegant and agile Mirage 2000C and today we'll be looking at radio navigation. The Mirage has two main forms of radio navigation, namely very high frequency omnidirectional ranging or VOR and tactical air navigation or TACAN. Both are alternatives to navigating using your inertial navigation system and may be employed when you do not have waypoint sets or your INS has, for example, malfunctioned. We are currently flying over the Black Sea and I'm lost. I want to find Kutesi Airport in Georgia. I don't know its location parameters because I'm a silly billy, but I do know that there is a VOR beacon there. So let's see if we can find Kutesi using VOR. Without going into too much detail, a VOR beacon broadcasts two radio signals and the phase difference between these two signals can be measured by our VOR equipment on board the aircraft, thereby providing us with a direction to the beacon. One of these signals is fixed, and the other signal we must tune into. To do this, we are going to use the VOR ILS panel here, which we have used in a previous video. It is comprised of two knobs with two sub-selections, and a frequency display. The sub-control on the left knob turns the system on and off. A for arete, which means off, M for marche, which means on. The sub-control on the right knob, HG and BD, are not used, they are just test modes. We can see here that the knobs change the frequency, with the left knob changing the pre-decimal part of the frequency and the right knob changing the post-decimal part of the frequency. Now, because I'm clever, I know that the frequency that we must tune to for the VOR beacon at Kutesi is 113.60. So let's tune to that. And switch on the system. When you switch on the system and the signal of the VOR beacon is detected, you should see a change on your HSI, your Horizontal Situation Indicator. And the secondary needle, the thin needle, will now point towards the beacon. So we don't use the, the main needle, the thick double arrow, we use the thin white arrow for VOR. So if I switch that off again, you'll see that the needle returns to the 3 o'clock horizontal position and this red flag marker appears. This indicates that the system is either switched off or I'm not receiving the signal from the VOR beacon. Here, because the red flag is missing and the arrow is giving me a direction, I know that I'm picking up the signal. Now, these signals are affected by the curvature of the Earth and other meteorological conditions, so if you don't immediately pick up the signal, I would advise you to gain altitude until you do. An important thing to remember with VOR navigation in the Mirage 2000C is that we do not have any DME, distance measuring, equipment. So the VOR navigation needle only shows the bearing and we have no ranging information to the bearing. If you are seeing any ranging information on the HSI, then this will refer to something else, perhaps your selected waypoint or selected TACAM. We can only use the VOR equipment in the Mirage 2000C for the bearing or the direction, so we must fly this direction until we find the beacon that we're looking for. So, using our VOR needle on the HSI as our navigation aid, we will turn until we are travelling in the correct heading. We will bring the VOR needle to line up with the white triangle, the heading carrot on the HSI.
our VOR needle is in the 12 o'clock position on the HSI, and we must continue to fly this heading until we find the beacon. Another important thing to note is that the navigation steering cue, the house shape symbol on the heads of display, again does not refer to VOR navigation. That refers to your INS waypoints. So do not use that. You must use the white needle on the HSI. To aid in our navigation, I am going to descend below this cloud just so I can see the terrain which will give me some indication of where I am. Obviously, because I have no ranging information, I must just continue to fly the heading of the VOR needle until I find where I'm looking for. You have to have a little bit of faith with this that the equipment is working, and some knowledge of the local terrain wouldn't go amiss. However, there is a way that we will know that we have passed over the beacon. Now, I think I can see the airfield up ahead, so we'll just check. Our VOR needle is still pointing forwards. We'll make a slight adjustment as it has slipped ever so slightly to the right. And when I fly over the beacon, I should see that the VOR needle uh, adjusts and slips to the six o'clock position relatively quickly. So let's take a look out for that. And there it goes. Indeed, there is the VOR station on the ground there. Let's switch off our VOR equipment by switching the left sub-control to A for ARET or OFF. And in our next example, we are going to use a TACAN as our main navigation aid, tactical air navigation. The TACAN panel is right next to the VOR ILS panel, and it looks kind of similar. It has two knobs with two subcontrols and a display. The subcontrol on the right knob controls the power and mode, so off. REC stands for receive, TR stands for transmit receive, and AA stands for air to air. In receive mode, our TACAN will give us only bearing information, whereas in transmit and receive mode, it gives bearing and range information. Air to air mode is used for something called TACAN yardsticks, and also for finding things like tankers. The display shows the currently selected TACAN channel, and this can be adjusted with the knobs. A TACAN channel is comprised of a one, two, or three digit number together with an X-ray or a Yankee, which can be adjusted using the left subcontrol. I'm going to use TACAN to continue my journey and navigate to Tbilisi. The TACAN beacon at Tbilisi operates on TACAN channel 25 X-ray. So I'm going to tune my TACAN equipment to that. 25. Make sure that it's in transmit and receive so I can get bearing and range. And if I do need to change the uh, X-ray to a Yankee, that's done on the left. TACAN navigation is also used with the HSI, but I need to select TACAN mode. So by changing the mode with this knob so that the indicator reads TAC, I'm now in TACAN mode. At the moment, I'm not picking up the TACAN signal. These red flags here and the fact that the needles are in the horizontal three o'clock position tells me that I'm not picking up TACAN signal. Again, these are uh, affected by the curvature of the Earth. So if I'm not picking up the signal, I should climb, gain altitude until I do.
Aha, I've picked up the signal. As I can see on my HSI, the red indicator flags have disappeared. I now have some ranging information and bearing information. Unlike VOR, Takan Navigation uses the main navigation needle, so that's the thick needle with the double white lines. And I can see there that it's pointing north-north-east uh, from me, and the range is around about 87 nautical miles. So again, I'm going to bring my navigation needle into a position with the white triangle, my heading marker. Note again that the navigation steering cue on the heads-up display does not refer to Taka navigation, so I'm going to ignore that and just use the information on my HSI. This heading for 81 nautical miles. Okay, I'm now just over 10 nautical miles away, and if I look down there, I can see uh, Tbilisi Airport. So I have successfully navigated to that Takan station. Now a Takan beacon doesn't need to be on the ground, it can also be on a friendly aircraft. Somewhere out there close to Tbilisi is this strato tanker and I want to navigate to it so that I can air to air refuel. I've been told by my mission controller that the strato tanker has a Takan beacon on it and the Takan channel that it is operating on is 97 Yankee. So I'm going to tune that. Now you don't have to but I prefer to switch the system to off then do the retuning and switch the system back on again. So 97 Yankee. You'll see here with the system switched off, I have no information on my HSI. But if I switch it to air to air, air to air mode, I'm giving some bearing information. Now the air to air mode in the Mirage doesn't seem to work properly. Um, sometimes it gives you the bearing, sometimes it gives you the bearing in range in air to air mode and sometimes it doesn't work at all. Here it's just giving me the bearing. So I'm going to, again, fly my aircraft so that my Takan navigation needle, the thick needle, lines up with the white triangle, the heading indicator. And let's see if we can go and find that strato tanker. There she is. Switching to transmit and receive mode will give me the bearing and range information. So you can see there that four and a half nautical miles ahead of me is the Stratotanker's Takan beacon. Having located the tanker, I can get set up for air-to-air -air refueling. Well, as ever, from the bottom of my heart, I hope that was useful for you. I hope it has given you some ideas of how you can use radio navigation in the Mirage 2000C. Feel free to do the usual thing, like, subscribe, comment and share. But until next time, virtual aviators, I look forward to seeing you online in the skies. This is Reva saying, last call.